featured snippets guys it's that golden chunk of real estate that everybody seems to be after but is there actually anything we can do to get more featured snippets we're going to talk about that and much more in this video let's get into it so for those of you that don't know what a featured snippet is this is a prime example so i've added in the keyword types of seo we get this huge excerpt that comes up that basically takes over that keyword and takes up a lot of real estate on the results page so that's what we're talking about i want to show you guys a real example of how effective these featured snippets are with a specific client of mine. So we were doing a bunch of featured snippet tests on this one specific page and we ended up getting the featured snippet for one of the main keywords that we were targeting and these are the results. So over the last six months, we've gotten a bunch of clicks, a lot of impressions, but this is what I need to highlight you guys, a 40% click-through rate. This is insane. For those of you guys that don't know what a click-through rate is, so it's the percentage of impressions that resulted in a click, right? So what this is saying is that four out of the 10 impressions that this post would get would result in a click, which is extraordinarily high. In comparison, we have this other page that is targeting a much larger keyword, but is also doing phenomenally well. So it bounces between the first and second position. And it also has a really high click-through rate, around 10%, but it still does not compare to that 40% click-through rate that we're seeing for that keyword that got that featured snippet. So guys, we cannot ignore featured snippets. There's a lot of clicks that we're gonna be missing on if our competitors get featured snippets on top of us. I do wanna talk about two quick disclaimers. So there is no real hack to getting more featured snippets, but what we can do is show Google that we have things in our content that could be considered as featured snippets. A second disclaimer I wanna talk about is that our main priority should always be focused on creating phenomenal content that people want to engage with, they want to share, and they want to come back to. So if we happen to get a featured snippet, that's just the icing on the cake, but that isn't our main goal when we're writing content. So let's do a quick breakdown on all the different types of snippets that we can get and how we can optimize for them. So the first one and the one I see the most is the paragraph snippet. So this is an excerpt of a paragraph that's taken directly from this URL and it's being shown directly on that search result. So the first one is paragraph. The second one is a list as I showed you guys before. There's different types of lists that we're gonna get into. The third type is a table. We're gonna see a lot of these and more on that in just one second. And the final one is a video. So if you guys watched my previous video on the SEO trends for 2022, which you guys are gonna find up here or here, I never know which site it comes up. But one of my points was that video is gonna continue to take over Google search. And the main way they do that is with these featured snippets. So so these are some of the things that I would do if I was trying to get more featured snippets on Google search with my video. So there's two main pointers. The first one is captions. Captions are an easy way for Google to access all the text that's being said in that video and they can pick and choose exactly which section they might wanna show. And the second one is chapters. So as these guys are doing, if we click into the video, we're gonna see that there's a bunch of different chapters inside of this video, which helps Google understand all the different sections that you are taking that user through. So the way I think about it is that chapters in videos are basically like headings inside of a blog post full of text, right? So very important to do these things. The reality is though, that from what I've seen, video might be the hardest one to control. So I say that because I've seen Google take really random parts of videos that aren't structured, that don't have any captions. So even though we can try our best, sometimes Google will take parts that they think are most relevant. So let's take a look at the second example. We're talking about tables here. The main thing I would do when we're trying to get a featured snippet for tables is to check how our competitors are doing it. There actually is a neat little trick that we can do to see if there are other competitors in the queue for their featured snippet. So let's say for whatever reason, Google decides to get rid of this specific website. So we can actually see who's up next and that's gonna help us take as many competitors as possible, see what they're doing, try and copy that and improve it on our website. So the trick is as following. So we're gonna do a dash, add the domain that we see down here. So godownsize.com. We wanna make sure there's no space in between the dash because if we add a space, we're basically gonna tell Google to exclude the rest of results and only show results for that specific domain. If we remove that space, we're basically gonna get rid of that domain. And if we hit enter, we're gonna see that there's another competitor in the queue for the featured snippet. So if this website for whatever lost the featured snippet, this is probably one that would take its place. So what I would do is I would go into both of these competitors. I would see exactly what they're doing. How is that table formatted? Is it actually an HTML table? Where is it being placed on the page? What's surrounding it? So is 
there an H2? Is there an H3 heading? We're gonna wanna take a look at all of these things. So I'm gonna try and find it in just one second. So I think this is exactly what's coming up in the search results. So what we can see here is that this is actually a structured table, right? So if we wanted to get that featured snippet for this specific keyword, we would wanna actually create a structured table in our content. So what I would do here is I would try and understand what this is surrounded by. So let's just quickly inspect this. And we see that this is an H2. So we see up there in the top left in purple, it says H2. So that's phenomenal. So it's surrounded by an H2. There's some text that might add to that context. And now I know the type of table and how they're doing it. So what I would do is I would learn from this and try and improve exactly what they're doing. So can I add another section here where I talk about, I don't know, the amount of people that you can fit on the boat or anything else to add a bit more relevance, add a bit more context and show Google that we're the best results available. I would do that for both of the results that are in line for the featured snippet. So I would also do that for this one just to see exactly what they're doing and how I can improve it. The third type of featured snippet we're gonna look into is the list type. So there's a variety of different types of lists that can come up. So it can be ordered lists. So it can be a one to 10, for example, or it can be an unordered list, just like this one with three specific bullet points. So we see it's coming up right here. The main thing we want to do here is again, try and copy exactly what's going on in the search results. So I'm going to do the same trick here. I want to see if there's anybody else in line for this featured snippet. And it looks like there is right. And so this also changes the type of featured snippet that was the list. And now we have a paragraph. So that's pretty interesting. So we definitely want to go in and check this competitor and see exactly how they're doing. Another thing that I've seen that is very common with lists is that Google actually compiles the list organically, unlike a table where most likely a table is something that you need to manually input an actual formatted table. Sometimes for lists, Google will compile them depending on how that page is formatted. Let me show you guys an example. If I type in fastest animals, we're going to see this long list of fastest animals. So you guys can see you've already clicked on it, but we're going to see that this data isn't actually present anywhere concretely on the page. It's spread out in a variety of different headings. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have an H2 and then an H3. So this is an H2 and then we have an H3. And then down here we have in bold, which is interesting to note, we have in bold their top speed. So what Google is doing here is they know that this is a list of the fastest animals in the world because we're telling it there's this H2 that that's separating this section of this list. And then we have for every new item on the list, we have an H3. We have some content and then we have the top speed, which is in bold. And we're gonna see that this is the format for each of the results. And this is exactly what Google is bringing up in the search results. So lists are gonna come in different shapes and sizes. We wanna, again, check what our competitors are doing, check how they formatted that page. What is the content talking about? How can we do what they're doing on our page and improve it, right? So the last type of featured snippet I wanna talk about about is paragraph featured snippets. So these ones are a little bit different. There's a few more things that we can do to play around with these types of snippets. So let's talk about it. Obviously, we wanna make sure that we do the same process as previous types of snippets. So we wanna go and check our competitors, see how they're doing it, see the type of content they're adding. How is it formatted? How is it structured? Is there a heading above it? We wanna make sure that we take note of all these things and implement those on our pages as well. However, in my experience, I've seen that there's a few things that we can do to improve our chance of getting a featured snippet and this has worked for me quite well. So we wanna create what some people call snippet bait or answer targets, right? So all this is, is whenever you have a relevant term or relevant keyword in your text, try and have a well-formatted section where you define that specific term. So we're going after those definition featured snippets. So the first thing I wanna do is I like to have an H2 or an H3 right above the text that contains that definition. So it will depend on the flow of the page, but never an H4, either an H2 or an H3. And within that heading, I'm gonna have what is that term. For example, what is a featured snippet or what is digital marketing? That's the term that I'm going to have in that heading. Right under that, I'm going to have the complete definition of that specific term in 40 to 60 words. We do want to make sure that we define the term properly. However, we do want to leave a slight element of ambiguity or interest that makes that reader click and want to keep reading about that specific topic. Another thing is we want to try and be as neutral as possible 
in these definitions. Google won't want to add opinions to these type of snippets. So just try and be as neutral as possible. And the final thing is that I try and sprinkle a variety of these in one piece of content. So it is definitely possible to get multiple featured snippets per post. We want to sprinkle these out and make sure that whenever there's a relevant term, whenever there's a relevant keyword that we can define and it fits in the flow of the content, try and structure it extremely well. Someone that does this phenomenally well is HubSpot. So if we go into their ultimate guide to SEO, we're gonna see this chunk of content that actually already looks like a featured snippet. So we're gonna see that we have an H2 up here. And then if we look at the amount of words, we have 59 words. So that's definitely suspicious for sure. So these guys know what they're doing. This snippet bait or answer target is definitely something that has worked for me in the past. And I hope it continues to work in the future. Let's take a look at how we can find some of those featured snippet opportunities directly on Ahrefs. So I've added the wire cutter into Ahrefs and I've added a few filters in the organic keyword section inside of Ahrefs. So the first filter that I've added is the actual positioning. And this is something I probably should have mentioned earlier on in the video, my bad. But Ahrefs actually did a study a few years ago where they looked at which pages were being picked for featured snippets. They made a very solid conclusion that 99% of those featured snippets were being taken from pages that were ranking on that first page. So from the first position to the 10th position. Anywhere after that, you most likely won't be included in that featured snippet. You won't be eligible for that featured snippet positioning. So the most important thing, as I said before, is to have that phenomenal content. And then we need to worry about having a featured snippet. A second filter that I've added is the volume. So I'm making sure that we have at least 100 searches a month. I'm also cleaning up a bit of that long tail. Otherwise, the amount of keywords we'll be looking at will be very, very large. And finally, the most important filter here is I'm making sure that on the results page of the specific keywords that we're looking at, we have a featured snippet, right? So these are feature snippet opportunities that are out there that the wire cutter currently doesn't have right now. Let's quickly take a look at one. So for example, we have smart blinds right here with a volume of 9.3 thousand and they're ranked number two. So this is a great opportunity to possibly get a featured snippet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the SERP. So the results page and here it is. So familyhandyman.com has that featured snippet before going in and checking that competitor's page to see exactly that type of content that's getting the featured snippet. What's surrounding it? How is it formatted? Do they have headings around it? What does that page look like? I'm actually gonna see if there are other featured snippets in the queue to see where we would be if we created that featured snippet or if Wirecutter is already in the queue. Maybe they already have a featured snippet in the queue. And if the familyhandyman.com for whatever reason lost this featured snippet, they would be the ones that would come up. So I actually have the keyword up right here. So as we can see, they're taking that featured snippet. And if I use the trick that I showed you guys before, so familyhandyman.com and I get rid of it, it looks like there are no other featured snippets in the queue. So this is a great opportunity for the wire cutter to go in, to do a bit of that competitor analysis and to try and attack that featured snippet. If you guys like this video, you're probably gonna like this breakdown of Canvas phenomenal SEO strategy and how it led to their $40 billion valuation. Otherwise, I'm gonna be posting my next video right here, which is a breakdown of Airbnb's incredible SEO strategy. I'll see you guys in the next one.